Hello, Arts Club friends and colleagues. A happy, well-deserved spring to you all. It's great to have this forum to discuss recent work, and I'm really looking forward to all the others that are coming up. Thank you, Jenna and Janine, for this opportunity. I'm going to talk about The Canary in the Lake, which is the project that counterbalanced for me the immense weight of this past year. I needed to find some sort of beauty and tell stories that could reside within a wider context beyond the pandemic of now. Since 2017, I've been collaborating with Dr. Catherine O'Reilly, a limnologist or lake scientist, and our exhibition and book of global lake portraits was not gonna wait. Kendra Pates, our wonderful curator, got funding from the Andy Warhol Foundation, and that needed to be used in this calendar year. So onward, there was no choice not to proceed as planned. The portraits of global freshwater lakes are created from data that reveals how each lake is changing due to climate change. In November of 2019, I was invited to the International Gleon Conference in Canada, the Global Lake Ecological Observatory Network, where I was the only artist amid 210 scientists from 21 different countries, and my steep learning curve of all things lake began, and where I learned the limnologist code. Well, if you have seen one lake, you have seen one lake. Working with the Gleon limnologists, I have succeeded to revisualize climate-related data from lakes on all seven continents. I generate unique new patterns from the data, interwoven with photographic imagery, archives, lake lore, and the vast palette of surprising yet natural colors of the lakes. I want to make visible the invisible, revealing the experiential and climate shifts that one cannot see. Together, this installation of now 20 lakes represents a portrait of global climate change as told by the water itself. The exhibition title, The Canary in the Lake, references both new bodies of work, the lakes and the Audubon pieces, and alludes to the canary in the coal mine because freshwater lakes function as sentinels of climate change. Each 120 by 60 inch printed fabric panel tells a unique story about species, habitat, history, and the plights of each lake, such as toxic algal blooms, mercury, growing lakes due to glacier extinction, or shrinking lakes due to drought. The colors are all significant, and I want people to ask questions like, why are we looking at this magenta lake? or a pink lake, or archives of Icelandic skaters. The sound piece that accompanies the imagery is an eclectic mix of researchers in their own languages, the viral babushka of Lake Baikal, underwater sounds, and even a Tanzanian rap song from the shores of Lake Tanganyika. The other gallery of the show is devoted to Tracing Audubon, 1832-2021 which is part of my last call's body of work. Leading up to the cusp of COVID, I had the opportunity to spend six weeks on a residency in the Florida Keys, researching the flora and fauna of the Everglades, Big Cypress, the Keys, and the Dry Tortugas. I set out to find the original 22 species depicted in the iconic 1832 portfolio, Birds of the Florida Keys and Dry Tortugas by ornithologist artist and now controversial figure, John James Audubon. Rather than making illustrative photographs of the roseate spoonbill, great blue heron, or anhinga, I use images and sound to convey how it feels to search for these birds in their natural settings. Working with my idea to use color as advocacy, roseate spoonbill calls is a wallpaper installation spanning 21 and a half feet using the bright fuchsia color of the bird's feathers, thus giving loud, colorful voice to these birds in peril. The new audio work plays vocalizations of the original 22 avian species interspersed with field recordings of the most invasive species, ourselves. Thank you, and I hope you'll be able to make it down to see the exhibition. It runs through May 16th at University Galleries in Normal, Illinois, 
and I look forward to your questions. Thank you.